18 years ago, the sudden appearance of the tower and gates unleashed countless monsters into the world. Alongside these events, a small number of people awakened to superhuman abilities, known as players. These few individuals became the hope of humanity and formed a new faction, creating the player's economy. Today, players are not only symbols of wealth, but also respected heroes. Our protagonist, Kim Gyu, was not chosen to become a player. Instead, he works as a delivery person. One day, while delivering food, a customer instructed Kim to place the order on the table. Kim apologized for being late. On his way back, Kim noticed a digital poster featuring a new young hero from South Korea, Yusu, who possesses a unique ability. Unique ability holders have extraordinary, almost cheat-like powers, making them superhumans among superhumans, essentially monster-like players. Later, Kim was scolded by someone for not moving when the traffic light changed. The scene then shifts to nighttime, where Kim arrives home and checks his mailbox, finding a stack of posts. Hurriedly, Kim checks the mail, only to find loan statements, hospital bills, and other expenses. He thinks to himself, what was I expecting? As he enters his house, his sister greets him. Surprised, he asks her why she isn't asleep yet. She replies that she was doing her homework. Kim then asks if their mother is sleeping, and his sister tells him that their mother just fell asleep and is resting more comfortably than usual. Happy to hear this, Kim asks his sister if she gave their mother the message. Instead, his sister wishes Kim a happy birthday and presents him with a cake. Surprised, Kim asks where she got the money to buy the cake. He then speculates that she might have used the money he gave her for new clothes. His sister responds playfully, saying she's loaded and, if Kim won't eat the cake, she will enjoy it all by herself. She also reminds Kim that she loves chocolate cake. His sister also bought the cake from a well-known bakery. Kim thought to himself how, despite her worn-out clothes, his sister, Yu Young, had bought a cake for him. He happily pats her head and thanks her, grateful to have a birthday cake thanks to his little sister. Yu Young then asks Kim if he wants to read a letter before they have the cake. Kim happily takes the letter and starts to read it. As he opens it, he is shocked to see that he has been accepted as a player and invited to the player association for an assessment test. Stunned and excited, Kim exclaims that he has finally become a player. Yu Young, crying, tells her brother that she wanted to surprise him, so she only took that one letter out of the mailbox. She then hugs him happily. Kim, filled with joy, thinks that he has finally made it and that their family's lives can change. As long as Kim can obtain that, the scene shifts to the Korean Player Association Center. Upon seeing the huge building, Kim is momentarily overwhelmed but reminds himself that now isn't the time to get emotional. This is only the beginning. As he enters the building, a girl congratulates him on being accepted as a player. She explains that by saying, status window, Kim's player information will pop up and encourages him to try it out. Kim says, status window, and a window appears, revealing that he is level one and has a unique ability. Curious about the question mark next to his ability, Kim asks the girl what it means. She is shocked by his status and congratulates him again, explaining that he is a unique ability holder. The question mark indicates that his ability hasn't awakened yet. Surprised, Kim can hardly believe that he is a unique ability holder and can't stop shaking. At that moment, one of the players observes the situation. The girl reassures Kim to relax, as the trainer will soon explain everything in more detail. Just then, a player named Yusuku approaches, and the girl is shocked to see him. Kim can hardly believe he is seeing the player Yusuku. Sukwu asks if he could guide Kim surprising him and exciting the girl. Sukwu explains that he unintentionally overheard their conversation and learned that Kim is a unique ability holder. Nervous, Kim listens as the girl, leveraging her 10 years of experience as a manager, states that while it wouldn't normally be allowed, she can make an exception this time. Sukwu thanks her, and then he and Kim proceed to the portal zone. As they enter the portal, Sukwu advises Kim to stay calm. Upon entering the tower and seeing hordes of goblins, Kim asks Sukwu if there are usually this many monsters on the first floor. Sukwu explains that sometimes the spawn timers overlap, causing a monster horde, but admits that this is his first time seeing so many monsters as well. Hearing this, Kim, scared, states that it sounds like a major problem. 
Sukwu reassures him, explaining that it is actually a blessing in disguise as it allows him to explain things to Kim more quickly. Sukwu asks if Kim knows about the 100 Goblin Test. Kim responds that he does and mentions that it was banned despite the great results because it was too dangerous. Sukwu confirms this, explaining that the test was designed to measure the hidden potential of players under level 10 by timing how long it took them to kill 100 goblins without using any skills. If Kim can complete the test in 4 to 5 hours, he has the potential to become a high-class player. Kim charges forward and starts taking down the goblins. Sukwu continues, explaining that completing the test in 2 to 3 hours indicates the potential to become a ranker, and clearing it in under 1 hour suggests the potential to become a high ranker. Kim is impressed by how easily Sukwu is handling the goblins alone. Finally, Sukwu states that the clear time for a unique ability holder is 10 minutes. Impressed, Kim thinks, so this is the power of a unique ability holder. Sukwu looks at his watch and states that it took 47 seconds to take down all the goblins. Surprised, Kim runs to Sukwu, exclaiming that while high rankers take one hour to complete the test, unique ability holders do it in 10 minutes. As Sukwu freezes the last standing goblin, he explains that the amount of strength that would take years for a normal player to build up can be achieved by unique ability holders in just a few months. The potential and growth of unique ability holders are beyond Kim's wildest imagination. Sukwu asks Kim if he has heard of the Angela Guild. Kim replies that he knows it is led by a very young ranker. Sukwu confirms this, adding that most Angela Guild members are incredibly talented and have completed the Goblin Test in three hours or less. Sukwu shares his plan to create the greatest guild that surpasses even the Angela Guild. This is why talented players, especially unique holders like Kim, are necessary. Sukwu expresses his hope that Kim will continuously overcome his limits so they can meet again in the tower. He then releases the last goblin and asks if they should start Kim's first hunt. The goblin charges straight at Kim, and Sukwu instructs him to put some strength into his legs and follow the goblin's axe with his eyes. Determined to change his life, Kim resolves to succeed. The scene shifts to five years later in the tower's forest, where a few players are watching Kim Gyu. One player notes that Kim is out of breath and attempting the goblin challenge, which has become popular again. Kim opens his status window and becomes frustrated. Despite being invited to the tower at the age of 18 and possessing a unique ability, what people call the privilege of the chosen one, he still takes a whole hour to kill a goblin. Kim wonders who would have thought that a player like him would remain at level 1 after 5 years. As the party takes down the goblin, they thank each other for their hard work. Kim asks if they have leveled up, and they confirm that they have. They mention that goblins are easy, light work for them, and that it doesn't even feel like they've fought too many before leveling up. Kim remarks that leveling up is quite easy in the beginning, and tells them that they will tackle the second floor tomorrow. He informs them to meet him at the entrance in the morning. As Kim leaves, the newcomers wonder if he is famous, having heard about him before. One of the newcomers mentions a few rumors surrounding Kim including that he is a unique ability user. The others get excited upon hearing this, but the guy clarifies that these are just rumors. He questions why Kim would be here if they were true, adding that another rumor says Kim is the lowest ranking of all players. He further states that Kim has a nickname among the players, the dysfunctional leveling player. After finishing his work for the day as a guide, Kim heads to a secluded part of the forest on the first floor, a shabby spot that players rarely pass through. This is a place Kim discovered due to spending more time on the lower floors than anyone else. A secret spot where a single goblin spawns daily. Kim prepares for what he hopes will be an easy hunt, planning to strike the goblin's vitals before it notices him. As Kim moves forward to strike, the goblin spots him and attacks. Kim manages to block the incoming blow, but the fight quickly turns challenging. Despite his efforts, Kim finds himself on the defensive as the goblin relentlessly attacks. Frustrated, Kim thinks to himself that it's going to be another hard fight. It takes him an hour to defeat the single goblin. Kim notes that he earned $20 from selling the crystal he acquired from the goblin. However, after deducting the cost of the potions he used, he is left with no profit. Just then, a guy named Teo emerges from a nearby room. Kim asks Teo if he is finishing work for the day. Teo replies affirmatively and apologizes to Kim for the situation. 
Kim then enters the room and asks Tarshik, the guide department operations manager, if something is wrong with Teo. Tarshik explains that the clients Kim was responsible for today will be taken over by Teo tomorrow. Surprised, Kim asks Tarshik why, since everything went smoothly today. Tarshik responds that it seems the clients heard rumors about Kim. Kim expresses confusion, stating that he doesn't see how that affects his role as a guide. At that moment, a news reporter announces that the Angela Guild has declared their intention to take on the 75th floor, which has seen stagnation until now, and they plan to depart tomorrow morning. Kim comments that, regardless of where someone goes, it always revolves around players, even though most civilians will never get close to the tower. Tarshik points out that players are considered idols of sorts. Kim reflects that, as an actual player, it feels so far out of his reach and then turns off the TV. Tarshik asks Kim why he turned off the TV, noting that Kim was watching it. Kim simply replies, just because. Tarshik then hands Kim his pay for the day and explains that Teo may seem stoic, but he feels bad about the situation. Tarshik advises Kim not to hold it against Teo. Kim responds that it's not Teo's fault and that there's no reason for Teo to be sorry. Tarshik emphasizes the importance of Kim coming in early tomorrow to ensure a smooth transfer and mentions that there has been a job request specifically asking for Kim. The scene then shifts to the next day, where a man introduces himself as Sian Pill. Kim introduces himself in return. Sian Pill mentions that he has heard a lot about Kim from Sukwu. Surprised, Kim asks how Sian Pill knows Sukwu. Sian Pill replies that they are cousins. Kim smiles and thanks Sukwu. Kim then asks Sian Pill, the party leader, to introduce him to his team. The team members are introduced as J1, the man on the left, and Songwar, the man in the middle. The girl on the right is introduced as Hanul. They tell Kim that they will be in his care. Kim assures them that, while he is sure they already know, for the next four days and five nights, they will be rapidly clearing through the tutorial floors. Kim trusts that they are all prepared, so he will explain the rest along the way. Later that day, as they start setting up camp, Hanul asks Kim if he needs any help. Kim replies that it's okay and tells her to feel free to rest once the tent is set up. Kim then cooks a meal for everyone, and they are excited to see the food, surprised to learn that Kim is a skilled chef. As they sit together for the meal, J1 mentions that he heard Kim cannot level up. C and Pill tells J1 to stop asking such questions, and Kim invites them to ask him anything else they are curious about. Kim then inquires about how the hunt went for everyone that day. Hanul responds that it wasn't as difficult as she had expected. The group mentions that they got scratched up a little, but the wounds heal quickly with potions. Hearing this, Kim explains that the goblins on the first floor are poorly equipped and their movements are fairly predictable. He suggests that they should view it as training to get accustomed to killing and reassures them that as long as they keep their guard up and work diligently to level up, they will do fine provided they don't encounter a guardian. Shocked, everyone asks about the guardians. Kim explains that guardians are the protectors of each floor who occasionally appear. They are boss monsters that guilds or large parties must defeat in order to progress. In terms of gates, they are like gatekeepers, powerful monsters that provide significant experience points and valuable items, though this is less true on the lower floors. Guardians are dangerous enough that even rankers tend to avoid them. Hearing this, everyone falls silent. Observing their reaction, Kim reassures them that there is no need to be scared. He adds that the regeneration cycles of these boss monsters have been determined, which provides a strategic advantage. There are guilds that specialize in hunting these guardians, and the guardians on the lower floors are typically taken down quickly. In fact, it will be harder for them to encounter one if they try. The scene then shifts to the fourth floor of the tower where the wilderness meets the forest. We see a monster fleeing from something but tripping and falling to the ground. At that moment, a boss monster, a formidable ogre, pounces on the fallen creature. On the second day of the tutorial, on the second floor of the tower, we read Cian Pill's diary. Although he was initially intimidated by the monster's large size, it proved to be less challenging than expected due to its slower speed compared to the goblins. On the third day, on the third floor, Sian Pill notes that although orcs and goblins appeared in groups, they lacked the intelligence to cooperate effectively. The method Kim suggested, starting a fight between them with a single pebble, was a masterful strategy. 
The ease with which they were able to level up was also due to Kim's choice of safe paths. Sian Pil now understands why Suk Wu highly recommended Kim. We then see Kim approaching Sian Pil and asking what he is doing. Sian Pil replies that he has been writing a diary every day since he received the invitation, considering that he might eventually write an autobiography if he becomes a ranker. Kim smiles and agrees that it could happen. Sian Pil adds that if he makes it through tomorrow, the next challenge is the test on the fifth floor, and Sian Pil is eager to secure a job quickly. Hanul wonders what job she might get, and everyone is excited about advancing to the fifth floor. Kim, however, appears concerned about the upcoming floor. The scene shifts to the next day, where Kim informs everyone that, as on the fourth floor, goblins and orcs will move in groups on the fifth floor. The difference is that their strength and agility will be slightly improved, but the methods for dealing with them will be similar to the previous day. As everyone begins to confront the orcs, Kim observes their progress but suddenly notices dust clouds. Kim realizes that this is not the usual day for the Guardian to appear and considers it a troubling sign. He warns everyone that they need to leave immediately and wrap things up quickly. Kim reflects on his experience as a guide, understanding that the tutorial is not a game, and even a small mistake could lead to the entire party's downfall. J1 and Hanul have both sustained injuries and soon, the leader of the orcs, a guardian, emerges, confirming Kim's bad feeling. Kim quickly instructs everyone to prepare to flee and throws smoke bombs to distract the monsters. Seeing the monsters confused, Kim tells everyone that this is their only chance to escape. Sian Pil asks Kim where they should go, and Kim directs them to follow him to a place where they can hide. They move into a cave, and Sian Pil inquires about the enormous orc they encountered. Kim explains that it is the guardian of the fourth floor and admits he does not understand how it appeared. For now, they should observe the situation and wait for rescue, as they have ample food supplies and can afford to take their time. Songwer informs Kim that Hanul isn't waking up because she has been poisoned by goblin venom. Kim reassures Songwer that there's no need to worry excessively. Hanul will recover once they administer some antidote. However, upon checking, Kim discovers that the antidote is missing. Kim realizes that he has dropped the antidotes. Frustrated, he reflects on how, despite their rush, making such an amateurish mistake is inexcusable. He tells himself to stay calm, knowing that he cannot afford to falter. Kim informs everyone that he will go outside to send a rescue signal. Shocked, they protest that it is too dangerous. Kim reassures them, stating that he is familiar with the tutorial floors to the point of exhaustion and plans to head to the hills to shoot a flare. He admits that, although he might not look like much, he is the best level one player in the world. Outside, Kim hides behind a rock. Observing the orcs, he notes that their movement patterns have changed due to the appearance of the Guardian, making it difficult to predict their locations. Deciding against this route, Kim opts to search for another path. He has one smoke bomb left as a precaution. As Kim proceeds, he realizes that, with his current speed, Kim estimates that he will reach the hill he is aiming for in three minutes. He plans to quickly shoot the flare and return to the cave. However, at that moment, the Guardian Orc attacks from behind, striking Kim and sending him crashing into a rock. The impact causes his last smoke bomb to fall and activate, enveloping the Guardian in smoke. Frustrated, Kim knows he must escape quickly. Determined not to fall for the same tricks twice, Kim rushes and shoots the flare in the air. Then, he decides to first put as much distance as possible between himself and the Guardian Orc. Kim tries to calm himself, reminding himself that no one knows this area better than he does and that there must be a way out. He spots the door to the fifth floor, the very place he had contemplated jumping into in despair but refrained from due to his family. It's a place where death seems inevitable for a level one like him. Frustrated, Kim questions why he came here, contemplating his predicament. Unable to handle the fourth floor and now facing the fifth, as the guardian orc spots him and charges with full force, Kim realizes that he faces either certain death or a chance at uncertainty. He decides to open the gate to the fifth floor to see what lies beyond. As he opens the gate, a window appears, stating that player information is being checked and Kim meets the requirements. The difficulty level significantly decreases, and the first test is to hunt a goat. 
Kim is confused by the situation but manages to take down the goat and pass the test. As a result, his job is determined, and his unique ability is revealed. Kim is perplexed, having entered this scenario prepared for death, only to find himself facing a mere goat. He wonders if this is truly all there is to it when suddenly, he is surrounded by an unknown presence. Kim wakes up in an unfamiliar place, unsure of his surroundings. A voice then asks if Kim is its master. Surprised, Kim questions the voice's meaning. The voice reveals that it has been waiting for this moment and wants Kim to choose a name for it. Confused, Kim doesn't understand why he should name the voice. The voice explains that it desires to form a link with Kim. A notification appears, stating that the ego has requested to link with Kim and asks if he accepts the request and chooses a name for it. The scene shifts to Kim waking up in a hospital, where his sister and Tarshik express their relief and joy at seeing him regain consciousness. They quickly call for a nurse to attend to him. From that moment, it has been two weeks since Kim was found unconscious at the door of the fifth floor. During this time, Kim learned from Tarshik that players from the guild, who saw the flare signal, managed to corner the guardian that had been rampaging at the fifth floor entrance. However, the guardian managed to escape. While it troubled Kim that the guild's players could not capture the guardian, he felt reassured knowing that Sian Pil's party was safely rescued. Kim then spoke to his mother on the phone, informing her that he would be able to leave the hospital after a few more tests. He reassured her not to worry, emphasizing that he was no longer a child and that the insurance had covered the hospital fees. Kim asked his mother to inform Yu Yung that she no longer needed to visit and should instead focus on taking care of her at home. Finally, Kim promised to notify his mother once his discharge date was finalized. After ending his call, Kim reflected on the fact that despite clearing the fifth floor, he remained at level one, contrary to his hopes. As he looked at the ring shining on his hand, the scene shifted to a few days later. Kim entered the portal, and all the players around him were astonished. As he walked through the crowd, speculation arose about his fame and achievements. One person mentioned that Kim was known for being a guide who couldn't level up. However, another player corrected this, stating that Kim was now famous for something else. When asked what Kim was known for, the player revealed that he was famous as the tutorial slaughterer. A horde of orcs then charged at Kim. Using his ring, a sword appeared in Kim's hand, enveloped in a red aura. Kim charged at the oncoming orcs and goblins, and with a single decisive strike, he took down all the orcs. Meanwhile, Ego prompted Kim to give him a name, and Kim decided to name him Lu, and Lu expressed his approval of the name. Meanwhile, Kim continued to take down the remaining orcs. A notification window then appeared, stating that Kim remained at level 1 and his job was to be Ego's partner. It indicated that Kim had formed a unique ability link with Ego and could now integrate with and utilize Ego's abilities. Lu was at level 7, and his skills, such as stamina, magic ability, and strength, were increasing as well. After defeating the monsters, Lu reached level 8.